we're going to look at some reactions of amides now. And the thing to keep in mind is the amide is the least reactive carboxylic acid derivative. So there isn't a lot we're going to learn about dealing with amides, but we will see that they can be hydrolyzed to carboxylic acid because all carboxylic acid derivatives can be hydrolyzed to give carboxylic acids. We're first going to look at this acid-mediated hydrolysis, which falls in the type 2A category. But notice the term mediated, and we're going to see why we need more than just a catalytic amount of acid. So if we look at just the basic amide here, just look at this methyl amide, and add to that acid and water, this will hydrolyze that amide to the carboxylic acid plus the amine. But the unusual thing about this on first glance is that if we look at these two things, the amide is more stable. The carboxylic acid is less stable. So how do we form something less stable out of something more stable? Well, we always need to look for a driving force for this reaction. And in this case, that actually has to do with the fact that we're using a full equivalent of acid. Because what will happen here is as soon as a molecule of the amine is formed, it's going to react with the hydrochloric acid to give us a very stable ammonium salt or amine salt, however you want to call it. So it's actually this step right here that is a driving force. And this also explains why you need a full equivalent of acid because for every one mole of amide you start with, you generate one mole of amine and that reacts with one mole of acid to give the ammonium salt. So that's important enough we'll right here. This requires a full equivalent of acid. The mechanism for this first part should be pretty familiar, so you may be able to skip over this. Um, but if you want to see how this happens, we will go through it. So we start with the acid, and that protonates the carbonyl. Next, we're going to use water to add to the carbonyl. So that'll add to that activated carbon.
Next, we'll keep this a little simple and do the proton transfer in an intramolecular fashion. And then from there, use the lone pair on the oxygen, bring that down, and lose the amine as your leaving group. So there's where we lose the methylamine. And then we get our protonated carboxylic acid and then from here you can use just a B as the base to take that proton off. Um, you could also use just your amine here, uh, the lone pair on it, and take the proton off and that'll take you to the ammonium salt in that step. We can also hydrolyze amides under basic conditions. Um, again, this is a mediated hydrolysis, so it's not catalyzed. And with this, this is type 2C mechanism, where we're using the carboxylic acid derivative with a base. And again, for this, we're going to have to find something that drives this reaction, because if we just look at a simple hydrolysis, do a dimethyl amide. Uh, that could, of course, be um, just one R group or NH2. It'll work the same. Like the ester hydrolysis, we need in the first step base and water. Second step, we need to add dilute acid to protonate the products we get. So the end result is that you end up with carboxylic acid plus the amine, um, or you might want to actually write this as the protonated amine, because under acidic conditions, the acid will protonate the amine. But on first glance, uh, like the, the acidic conditions, we see that we're forming a less stable carboxylic acid from a more stable amide, which doesn't look possible at first because you know, usually we're forming more stable things. So we have to find a driving force for this reaction as well. And we can do that if we go through the mechanistic steps. So for the mechanism, we start by adding hydroxide to the carbonyl. Once we do this, we get the tetrahedral intermediate. Now, from this stage, what we usually do is we bring this negative charge down or bring the lone pair down to reform the double bond and then we lose a leaving group. Most of the time when that happens you lose the OH and that reverts to product because OH is a much better leaving group than nitrogen. But on occasion, and I'm going to draw a very small arrow to the right a large arrow to the left saying this doesn't happen 
often, but on occasion, the amide will get expelled. So we'll say it's rare. but it does happen. But as soon as that does happen and these two molecules here form, what we have is a pretty strong base, a pretty good acid, and you get a very fast acid-base reaction. And now I'm gonna draw just a single non-equilibrium arrow This happens very fast to get the carboxylate. And the amine. So this step here is your driving force. The acid base reaction at this stage. Now this is when you do step two. And we add acid, and that acid will protonate uh, the carboxylate, but it's also going to protonate your amine. So let's just say we add HCl as our acid. We protonate the carboxylate. and get the carboxylic acid. I'll draw out the amine fully, dimethylamine. It already had one hydrogen. We protonate it, add a second hydrogen. Plus, we get Cl minus. And that's a stable amine salt there as well. 